Hey everybody, Matt Johnson here. I had the pleasure of interviewing Emojin Shays with Bobby Chu on the Chu stream recently. And as someone that specifically finds character design and story driven artwork compelling, I thought it'd be fun to bring her back. Um, she's done costume illustration for blockbuster movies and series like True Blood, uh, The Meg, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and more. Um, she's currently working on film projects ranging from a, a new Netflix original to uh, the Terminator movie that just came out. Um, and as a plot twist for all of us, um, she did work on the new Game of Thrones prequel pilot, and it was abruptly brought to a halt just like 24 hours before we recorded this. Uh, while this was kind of a bummer, it gave us a chance to talk about like dealing with disappointment as an artist and just how to make the most of a situation like that. So... Um, we also get a little bit into building portfolios and what kind of mentality it takes to be happy and successful no matter like what path you choose in your career. So, um, yeah, without further ado, here's Imogene. How's California right now? California is crazy. <laughs> um, I'm currently at my boyfriend's apartment because uh, my house was affected by the PG&E power shutoffs. Oh, and wow. Yeah, and um, we're not too far away from the big, uh, they're calling it the Kincaid fire. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I've had friends that had to evacuate and yeah, it's crazy. That's but it's like, it's, 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 it is, it's really scary. Well, my my wife is actually, same. my wife mm -hmm. is actually flying back from LA today to where oh, we man. live and uh yeah it was she was you know they're riding up the coast in a bus her and her friend and she's like there's like sea mist on one side of the bus and there's like ash on the other side of the bus oh man now her la is bad too really yeah um I, like her flight got delayed a little bit but she's gonna be home on time and that's pretty cool i'm sure there, there's a lot worse going on with that fire than a delayed flight i didn't get to meet you at lightbox i know <laughs> You know, I tried to, and like, I really wanted to. Yeah, I tried to take like the last like three months or so of people that I'd gotten to speak with on the Chew stream or whatever and just be like, I got to go make a point to just like shake their hand or something. But I, what was that whole experience like for you? I, I thought it was, I thought it, they pulled it off flawlessly almost from my perspective anyway. Um, a, about a month before that, I went to Comic Con and to have that comparison. It just felt like everything was running so smoothly and it felt nice that it was so focused um, on just artists and mainstream artists, I would say. And I thought it was great. I've met so many people that I follow on Instagram, but had never seen what they look like. And it was kind of funny to talk to someone and then all of a sudden realize, oh my God, that's you. I know your work. Um, and that was happening every day. It, it, I really, I've been to a lot of conventions and I felt like it really had a different energy about it. It did. It was, I thought it was extremely positive. And I think because we are in this, it's not a closed off world, but a world, a world where almost everyone is aware of everyone else, but not directly. And to sort of put us all in one space was kind of overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it's a much smaller community when you look at it like that. And it wasn't everybody like, oh man, I don't know how I'm going to get clients or like, how do I make right. it as a freelance artist? Or, you know, nobody was like sulking about the industry woes that they may or may mm. not have. Um, it, it just was like, it could be a video game guy sitting next to somebody who's working in film, somebody who's working in cartoons and television. And like, you really, you have like the common ground of being a creative and creating for entertainment. But beyond that, like, you can't, like, shop talk, really. So you can't get into the weeds of things. And I think everybody stayed real positive because of that. Did you go to any panels or were you too busy or? I didn't. I, w I wasn't too busy. It was just so hard to get into them. Yeah, yeah. They were very popular. But then um, Phil Boutet told me that because I, I, was, I was on a panel and I had the presenter badge. He's like, you could have just walked into any of them. I'm like, what? Really? <laughs> That's uh, pretty much true. Yeah. I uh, I remember um, 
like the right when I got there on the first day and I got my badge, I just was like, I'm just going to ask forgiveness rather than permission for some of this and just go where I need no. to go. It was pretty fun. No, I mostly just, uh, the first day I was by myself. So I sort of wandered around the convention floor and I found some of the other people that I was doing the panel with and I made a point to introduce myself to them. And the second day was when a whole bunch of my friends uh, were going. So we all met up and it just turned out that they were friends of people that I was friends with, but didn't know them. There were all these sort of two way connections, but turns out we were all in the same friend group. Everyone knew somebody some in a different way. And it was, we ended up creating this big herd of people. <laughs> <wondering about. laughs> oh man, that's so cool. That's just really yeah. great. Like I, I felt like I had like really good experiences meeting people that were also like, let me help you. Let me see how I can do something. Or, or I was saying that to them, maybe like, how can I do something for you? Or what can you do? Like, and not like in a, uh, you know, selfish way. I mean, it was like this, this generosity that I felt it was the total opposite of that. It was just like, everybody right. was People just wanted everyone to lift each other up. Yeah. And it really wasn't BS. Like it really did seem to be the case. It was really nice. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling fast paced work right now? Are you feeling like, I mean, it seems like you've got this forward upward momentum with what you're doing. Um, <laughs> no, it's funny like, you like, that, actually. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you saw the news yesterday, but uh, the game of Thrones pilot that I worked on got canceled. Yeah. That was like a huge shock to everybody. That's yeah. how do you feel about it? I guess is the only thing I can ask. Oh boy, I'm I'm feeling lots of things. <laughs> yeah. Um, yesterday was a little rough to say the least, but I don't know. I mean, it it happens all the time, unfortunately, and hopefully this will just uh, thicken my skin a mm. little bit more. And you know, this one in particular was a bigger shock than most, but you know, it kind of hopefully comes one day. I'll artwork and that's really all that matters to me at this point yeah and i mean it's just i guess part of the industry of of working on those like really highly anticipated projects is that sometimes you fall in love with your baby there and then something oh, yeah. happens yeah is that kind of the mm -hmm. experience oh absolutely and i think there I, I guess there was no thought in my mind that this could happen to that particular project yeah, I can see you that. Know. Like no one saw that project go in that route. I mean, there's just, there's so many forces at play with why they want to do certain projects at certain times that, mm -hmm. you know, the, the HBO gods just know better than I do, obviously. I guess so. Well, you also, that later that day they announced they totally greenlit the other ones yeah. straight to series that they haven't even started production on yet that I know of anyway, maybe they have. So mm -hmm. like, what do you, like, uh, it, was that a project that was going to be an ongoing thing right away right now? And now it's like, you were going to go into work tomorrow and now you're like, well, I don't know what I'm going to work on today. Or is it just <laughs> um, kind of like you move on to the next thing? No, like if that were, it wasn't even a guarantee that if, if it had moved forward that I would be working on it. Mm -hmm. And that's dependent upon, um, my boss on the pilot, the costume designer, so um, it's not so much a disappointment about the job security, but about possibly having to bury all the work mm -hmm. that I did on it for for who knows how long. <laughs> right. And like you, uh, you, it seems to me like you would approach a project like that and you'd say, I might work on this and it might not get greenlit or I'm going to work on this and I'm gonna probably work on it for like six or seven years depending on how many seasons of whatever show they do so right you have to be like ready for that level of commitment right but then at the mm -hmm. same time ready to just say all right well they got canned and uh we did our best yep <laughs> uh yeah like i said the the biggest thing that matters to me at this point is trying to find a way to uh, for them to allow me to release the artwork well you just pour so yeah. much into mm -hmm. what you do you know i mean it comes through in your work and it's there's just an attention to detail there and i you know i'm not blowing smoke either it's awesome work and <laughs> it's you just, so much. 
you know, and then you do, I mean, I don't even know if you can talk about it, so I don't want to like skirt the details too much, but like, let's say you work on like two dozen characters or, or even a dozen or 50 characters for this show. Like who knows? Um, you've just built this like entirely new portfolio of like the best work that you've done so far. And, Mm -hmm. um, I hope we get to see it too. That's why I bring it up. Like that just seems like it would be like you putting your best foot forward. And I really hope that there's a, even if it's years from now, it'd be really cool to see. Right. No, that's, that's exactly how I feel about it. It's definitely the most proud I've ever been of, uh, work that I've done. And, you know, the particular title of the show is pretty impactful and I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. But you have other exciting things going on, and I would. What are you excited about right now? What you working on? That um, you can I talk have, about. I know that there's a lot of hush hush, and I don't want. To... Oh no, no, actually, no. I haven't. I haven't been super busy lately. I just took the summer off. I've been kind of um, taking some time since Game of Thrones ended, and I'm about to start uh, a little Netflix movie. Cool. Tomorrow, actually. And um, other than that, what I'm particularly excited about um that we talked about earlier is that terminator is about to come out so yes. that'll be a nice big slew of work i'll get to show people and uh that was a really fun project to work on and besides game of thrones it's probably the biggest title i've worked on yeah that's huge i mean come on that's, that's like gonna get really- Thank God. (laughs) Yeah. Like it just goes to show you if it can happen to that one, it can happen to anything. No Um, kidding. You said you took the summer off kind of. So Mm -hmm. did you have any, like, was there like a a big art break for you or was it like, oh man, I really want to scratch around on the Wacom tablet and do something or how, how was that? No, I don't do any artwork in between projects. I don't know. If that's the best practice, probably not. But um, I've always been the type of person that is the most inspired while being part of a bigger picture or like a pipeline, so to speak. I like, um, sometimes I say that I consider what I do more technical than artistic um, because the images I make are essentially used as a tool for uh other workers down the line um and there's something i really like about that so when i'm not on a project i i don't feel compelled to keep making art first do you feel like you're like kind of uh, always on thinking about you know what the next costume thing is what the next design and fashion trends are or do you shut that down too and you're just like nope this is not work time I'm, i'm gonna just go on vacation and do vacation or, or... Um, actually, I pay attention uh, to what's going on in, in films and TV. Like I see, sometimes I go on um, IMDb stalking <laughs> black holes and see what people are working on and what products are out there. And, you know, people are also really releasing their own artwork as movies come out. And I always pay attention to what they're doing and what, you know, other designers consider to be acceptable work or or high quality work and try to you know compare it to my own and just to sort of keep up with what's going on and maybe if I feel there's some people that are above me then I'll bring that to the next project or or not or I'll be like oh good okay I'm doing okay and then I won't (laughs) (laughs) You know, I get it, though. Like, I've never been someone to, like, always have a sketchbook on me or always be working on something. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll have, like, these breaks where I go do maybe marketing work for a few months instead of illustrating anything and just come back to it and just dive back into a project. And I'm just like, hey, it's not like I I don't have that, like, out of practice feeling that some people get, I think. Mm Mm-hmm. And it helps to just like jump back in and then start working. So I, I get it. I think there's different styles for everybody where you, there's somebody out there who just doesn't want to put down a pencil. And then there's other people that, you know, I like working in a collaborative way, like you mentioned as well. That's awesome. So mm-hmm. it's just good to know like where your own comfort level is, I guess. 
Yeah, it's true. And I like what you said about uh, that out of practice feeling, because um, sometimes I do question that in myself, if it's something that would um, help me to sort of work on my skills in between projects. But um, what usually when something starts and I have, you know, the information that I need to do my job, I kind it's like I do just jump back in and it's sort of uh, almost a muscle memory thing because um, I just sort of I know what needs to be done in order to uh, make a working image. Yeah. For one. That being said, do you did you find yourself do you ever find yourself a little nervous to start one of these big projects uh, or is it still something you kind of once you're doing your thing and the muscle memory kicks in? No, yeah, I was really nervous when uh, I started on Terminator. Oh, really? Terminator oh, yeah. even more than the others? Uh, well, Terminator and Game of Thrones, both of those. Yeah. I was pretty nervous. But Terminator, um, as you were saying, it is such an iconic franchise at this point that it it was it was slowly hitting me as I was working at like how <laughs> um, sort big of a deal it was because you know I would be. You know, at some one point we started working on um, Arnold's looks, oh, and I would have to, you know, add the thing to his face where his skin, you know, was ripped off on one side, and you can see the the metal skeleton skull underneath it. And I was like, "Whoa, I'm doing this right now? <laughs> Me? This is crazy." Yeah, uh, there, there's got to be a time where it's like way early in the process people are like oh we're gonna do another terminator movie and some people kind of roll their eyes and it's like okay yeah we'll do yeah. another terminator movie and then you're like holy crap i'm literally like this could be good if i do my job well right wow. that's and a good plus feeling. The, uh, the thing that was a little bit extra about this particular movie is that it was the first time one that linda hamilton was coming back mm -hmm. um since terminator 2 uh, and two, it was the first time James Cameron was going to be involved. I don't think he had been involved in any of them since Terminator 2 yeah. either. Yeah, no, uh, I think you're right. Yeah. And there were also certain points uh, where I was getting images from the head of makeup that he was up supposedly just playing around with to figure out certain um, like scar patterns on one of the characters. And it was like one of the most badass pieces of <laughs> like photo bashed artwork I've ever seen. And this was just apparently something he threw together really quickly. And I was like, Oh my God, I need to, I need to up my game fast. Yeah. He and did again, that just several wake up calls throughout the first couple months of the show. Would you know, it seems like there's a strict, it seems like there'd be a strict design kind of language about a franchise and mm -hmm. you like kind of, you have to kind of like wade into those waters and, you know, go along with that general design language while still trying to bring something new to it and fresh and everybody being like, oh, my God, thank you so much. Uh, we're so glad we had you on set to do this or, or on the project yeah. to do this. Did you find yourself pulling back from being too individual or... Did you just go for it? Like, this is my look. This is my style. This is where I'm going. Well, I think, thankfully, uh, my style, which is sort of a more realistic style, worked out pretty well. Uh, but for one of the characters in particular, um, her name is Grace. I don't know if you've seen in the trailers. She's the tall, sort of blonde, short-haired mm -hmm. one. She's this, like, badass augment lady. And... Uh, we I went through three tries with her to get her look down. And do you we mean were... that was like three tries for yourself personally, or you mean three tries that went up the flagpole and came back down? Like now we need something else. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the flagpole was just one person, my boss. True. <laughs> and uh, which was good. So we were just working out her sort of pose and look because since we had so many, we had a pretty large amount of characters, but per character some of them had 30 to 40 different changes and costumes that we had to figure out so this was just figuring out the, the figure that we were going to use for her um to get her look right and that's where we went through three different tries 
Man, it seems I'm like hard one. What was that? I'm sorry. I just spoke. Oh, oh, sorry. I said, and luckily we got it on the third one. And I believe that she, I think with Arnold, we went through, we also went through three, but it was more um, stretched out throughout produc the production. Do you still feel like you're, you're like in, in there kind of brainstorming with everyone or do you feel like one step removed a little bit? Oh, I'm definitely insulated. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you don't sound sad about that. <laughs> <laughs> really. I mean, sometimes I have, there was one time I did work on site for a film and that was for the Meg. Yeah. Um, and it was amazing. It was so much fun. Um, I got to go to New Zealand and when you're in the office, you get to see the costumes being built as we're designing them. So that was really exciting. You know, that's but, just like even another level beyond like uh, when people, you know, build things out in, in CG and, you know, you build these concept characters or places and they become computer worlds mm -hmm. and these, you know, digital files, that's exciting enough. But to see like, I painted this yesterday and today it's like a real thing. Oh, it's it, it definitely hasn't gotten old for me yet. Even um, if I am working remotely, sometimes I'll get sent fitting photos of, you know, something we worked on the week before. And that's that's also very, very exciting. Like, oh, my God, there it is. Um, to go back to your question, yes, I would say I'm very insular. The only person I communicate with is the costume designer and a little bit of the supervisor and, you know, the people that have to deal with the administrative parts of things briefly uh but other than that yeah then and I, on terminator and on game of thrones there were at least two other uh costume illustrators uh, and i never once interacted with them at all either wow so you guys just got like your own dedicated projects care slash characters you were working mm -hmm. on i guess that's yeah. kind of good too that gives like a, a new freshness to certain characters yeah, it's true. And it was interesting because because a lot of the time she would pass over artwork from another artist uh, that I would either have to tweak or grab elements from. Uh, and it is. It's like, ooh, what are they doing? Ooh, that's cool. And they are. It's They were so much so different from what I was doing. At one point, we were doing these sort of group shots of three different characters. Mm -hmm. um, we were just putting... Because there was a scene where they were all in some big fight together. So we put them all together um, on one page and sort of pieced together their looks that way. And then, you know, did all the damage and stuff to them. Uh, and then maybe a month later, they released the very first promo image for that film. And it was basically shot for shot the group image that we made oh man that's awesome with the real with the real actors oh, in man. the country. and so i was really like I, I remember seeing it on instagram or something and for a second getting really confused so I'm like, <laughs> what? I, didn't, I didn't post what how did they, like you have like a that? like a minor panic attack that somehow your artwork <laughs> leaked yeah and um <laughs> But no, it's so I guess what happened is they used those things that we did for a presentation for uh, I forget who if it was Paramount or James Cameron's studio. And he uh, he loved it so much that they basically used that to formulate their promo image. That's but that was it was against Tim Miller's will, the director. Oh, so they got, really? Yeah. So I guess there was a little bit of drama behind it. Like he didn't want to go that way for their for their first uh, initial release, but they did. So it was one of those moments where James Cameron kind of just took over and did his own thing. Um, wow, I'm James Cameron. Fun. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so I would say, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. There was a point in time when I was trying to branch out and possibly work in games or. I don't know, animation and was trying to maybe diversify my portfolio into um, being able to do environments and props and vehicles and whatnot. 
it was feeling so forced to me and I wasn't enjoying it when I was trying to practice. And I was also trying to learn 3D, which is actually something I should still be working on because that's starting to make its way into costume illustration. But um, I finally just accepted that that's what I love to do is people wearing clothes. And I think that has a little bit to do with the fact that my educational background is in fashion and costume as opposed to art and illustration. So uh, I think, and it's weird, once I sort of got into that mindset, the ball really started rolling a lot faster with uh, the work that was coming in. So yeah, I finally just accepted that that's what I want to do. And um, yeah, I've, I've stuck with that ever since. I think it's so awesome because there's so much of, you know, oh, I need to check these boxes. I need to have, uh, you know, some people not, this is very much generalizing, but I think especially younger artists, there tends to be this, I need to check the boxes of there needs to be a tank in my portfolio. I need to have yeah. landscape painting. And it, there's, it's so externally motivated by what they think they maybe should do and not so much just kind of like focusing on what you want to be really good at. It's so, so true. And that is the exact mindset that I had, which is why um, I found it really interesting. When I was at Comic-Con, I um, met some people from Rockstar Games and they were actually looking for someone exactly like me. Wow. They were looking for a character concept artist, but uh, with a focus in costumes. And I was just, I was totally flabbergasted by that. Like I've never heard of a game studio wanting to hire somebody that specific because when you when you scour the the job postings for concept artists which are rare enough anyway it's always like you have to know how to do everything like every <laughs> single different thing from what i've seen anyway and um yeah it was just cool cool to see that so it sort of gave me a little bit of hope if that's ever a direction i want to go in yeah, that's awesome. And like, I think you're right. It, it feels like only the only the best are the ones that get to have those specialized jobs that don't exist elsewhere. You know, that's really yeah. cool. It's a real testament to your talent and the, your specialization that there is like only that job out there, but also like there's not a lot of other people like you that could could take that job like so <laughs> you're at the top of the list but you're also like maybe one of the few people on the list you know that's awesome i, I guess so yeah it, it was definitely eye-opening and you know and then it comes down to just like really like chemistry and are you easy to work with do schedules line up like these right, things get a little more complicated is there anything else you wanted to maybe tell us about terminator or just what you're up to lately, what you're going to be up to in the next month or so, other than wishing you were working on Game of Thrones? <laughs> That's a good question. No, it's it's funny. Lately, um, I haven't had much of a plan for myself. I'm just sort of, sort of taking what comes along at this point. Yeah, it's just like there's a time. And like right now, I think I'm even doing that where I'm like, you know, I'm going to do some YouTube things because I want to. Um, I know that's so cool. Uh, what what made you decide to sort of branch out from schoolism and do your own thing? Well, you know, and it's I, I, would, I was just talking to Bobby about this yesterday. We had a little thirty minute together, uh, a little catch up on some things, and um, you know, I feel I, when I sat down with the YouTube panelists because I did the panel on YouTube uh, artists artists on YouTube. <laughs> And, you know, between the four of them, they all had such different flavors of doing kind of the same thing. And I felt like I always was in a position of like, well, you know, Bobby's the expert. And really, honestly, he is. He's done like hundreds of interview style things. But I, for me, I wanted I was like, you know, I can still do kind of my own thing. There's not like a, a qualification level to this if I just am interested in doing it. And, you know, for me, it was that there's there's my own special, maybe not special, but I feel like I have my own conversational tone and that's going to be different with you. Um, and then if you go and listen to anybody else who's doing podcasty style conversations, it's always going to be their own. Um, and so I just, you know, I was doing the, the 
two stream stuff with Bobby and he um, was totally like, oh, super excited that I reached out to you and um, a couple of the other people that I've reached out to for this. He was really uh, all about it. And I think that's something that he really likes to see too is like people who he's mentored over a certain amount of time uh, kind of getting out there and doing their own thing. Like don't just wait around to be asked to do whatever it is. Like sometimes right. just like, you know, if it's a passion and you're not asking somebody for money for it or something like that, then just go do it. So yeah, I think what I'm doing is kind of following that passion for myself as well. I'm not saying like, oh, I have to have an art portfolio that's good enough before I start doing YouTube conversations. Right. That's kind of silly, right? <laughs> no, that's awesome. It, I know. I was so excited when you reached out. Oh man, I'm so glad because you're one of like the first five because I told you I started kind of working. Yeah, I started kind of working backwards um, from people I'd had communications with recently. And mm -hmm. I was like, it just like the kind of artwork that I enjoy doing also. I don't think I would call it costume illustration by a long sight, but I enjoy character design a lot. Like, yeah, and, it's so yeah, it was looking at, you know, seeing what you do, looking at your uh, portfolio of stuff. I was just like, you know what? If I just want to draw goofy characters that are just stand-ups in a, in a, a simple environment, I might be able to just keep pushing it and developing that and learning more about that. So I just think oh. I, I find your specialization to be really inspiring. Really? Wow. Yeah. That, that's so nice to hear. It really is. No, oh, well, you were nice enough to come and hang out with me and be one of the <laughs> one of the guinea pigs on this little oh, YouTube goodness. adventure. So I am grateful for you. Thank you. Well, thank you, too. This has yeah. been great. All right. So there you have it. Uh, go check out the new Terminator movie. Uh, Imogene is super talented and she just has a great attitude and outlook. And I think we could all benefit from focusing a little more on our passions and what fills our cups and less of the you know like the box checking that we think like the big publishers and movie studios and things might require to hire us if you're good at what you do and you love it and keep putting your work out there your day will come so yeah uh go follow her keep up with what she does uh there are surely going to be more awesome things as her career grows uh and for me please subscribe and like this video if you want to see more content like it. Thanks for listening.